Hi, this is a video demonstrating the deployment of a tree tier application that meets the system requirements outlined in the CA brief. I'm going to take a step by step through the process of creating a multi AZ application with a tree tier, with a tree -tier architecture and what's involved in that. As you can see here, we are on the Learner Lab Associate Service, and I've created the AZ deployment in this uh, Learner Lab. I've started the lab already, so I'm going to go into the lab, which is by clicking here, which will bring us to the BBC Management Console. So in step one, you're asked to create a project VPC to host a multi-AZ deployment. And you're asked to name the project, project VPC. Now, as you can see, I named the project VPC one. I had an issue with uh, calling the project VPC because I tried to start already and I couldn't. So I started again and called it VPC one. Now, as you can see, I've created the VPC. After that, in step two, you have to work horizontally to create each layer of the subnets at a time. So basically, you have to create all the subnets. If you go off to the subnets, you'll see that I've created the web tier subnet, the app tier subnet, and the DB tier subnets. These are the web tiers. These are the app tiers. These are the DBs. And these are our public subnets. You're also asked to create two NAT, gateway, NAT gateways and link them to public subnet two and public subnet three. So if you go out to the NAT gateways, you'll see that I have the NAT gateways first, second, and third. And these NAT gateways are linked to the public subnets. In step four, you have to create root tables and rename them to zone A, B, and C. So you go to root tables. You'll see that I have the root tables created. You'll see that I've named them zone A, zone B, and zone C. And you also see that they have three subnets within each root table. And if you click the root table zone A, you'll see the subnet associations in here. For zone A, it's private DB private subnet one, app private subnet one, and web private subnet one. And again, if you go to private root table B, you'll see it's the same. Subnet associations only it's app private subnet two, web private subnet two, db private subnet two. And then this is again repeated for zone B, oh sorry, zone C. And zone C again, web private subnet three, app private subnet three, and db private subnet three. And then in the following step, we are asked to edit the subnet associations. This will create the architecture that I've demonstrated. So when you go to the root tables, that's how you, the subnet associations have been created. So when you click them, these are the subnet associations. Then in step six, you're asked to create the security groups. This will allow certain traffic to, to flow from the, this will allow certain traffic from the internet to flow in, only access to the public side of the system. So basically, when you create the security groups, you want certain traffic to come in 
to the system, but you don't want traffic coming all the way into the back end of the system. You only want it coming into the public side. So this is why we create the subnet groups to give certain groups certain access to certain areas of the system. And the groups we're asked to create are the web, uh, ELBSG. So this is to allow access to the load balancer. Inbound traffic from HTTP traffic on port 80 from anywhere it comes in here. Then we're asked to create the web SG. And the web SG allows inbound HTTP traffic from port 80. Then we're asked to create the app ELB SG. And the app ELB SG allows inbound traffic from the web SG. Then we're asked to create the app SG. The app SG allows inbound traffic from the app ELB SG. And then we're asked to create the DB SG. And the DB SG is allowed is to allow MySQL traffic from the app tier to create inbound rule from MySQL Aurora and allow traffic from the app SG. <coughs> they also made this group join configuration. This is just for setting up purposes to config group. It's not one of the groups requested in this um, architecture, but it came in handy when we were creating when I was creating the groups. This method of creating security group is called is also called group chaining, and the reason we do this is to protect our system while allowing public access from the front end web service. And step seven. If to create a web server and an app server and test both, the web server will access will be accessed by the public on, on the system. So it's important that you have it's important that you have test access. So if you go to the instances, and you'll see that we have got our web servers created, which is the conf web server, and then we have the app web server the app comp server, we have the app autoscaler and the web autoscaler. These, is, these are all being generated by our autoscaler that we've created in their layer steps. But if we go to the web server and open the public address, It's just a test that you can access the web server. It's just taking a second. It's probably because we have HTTPS on our web browser. So just remove the S. You'll see that we have access to the web server. This is because we're allowing HTTP traffic in and not HTTPS traffic in. So you can just configure the inbound rules to enable HTTPS. But you can see we have access to the web server here, which is this 54144122 and 54144122 and 1. testing it. Yeah, generate CPU load, and you can see we're able to test the web server. Yeah. Go back to the instances and check out this address as well. As you can see, this is accessible as well. So this step is basically we created the web server, we created the app server, and we tested from one system to see their public access. And yet, as you can see, they both have public access. In step eight, we're asked to create a web AMI and an app AMI. This will be utilized by the autoscaler and layer steps through the launch configuration, which we will also create. I'll show you this now. Let's get rid of this. So in our AMIs, you can see we have the app AMI and the web AMI. This is our app AMI. And 
is there a way of being one? And then in the next step, we were asked to create a database using the MySQL option. So we go to services, open our DSM tab. And the database is called project one. My project database called project. And you can see that the database is here and being created. And the next step for us to create a load balancer. Two load balancers to be precise. One is going to be the web load balancer and one is going to be the app load balancer. So if we go back to our easy to console. Go down to the load balancers. You'll see that we have the app BLB and it's internet facing. You see that we have the web BLB and it's internet facing. We will be using the web BLB to access the system in later steps. We also needed to create target groups. We go down to the target group tab. You can see that we have the app group. And you'll see that we have the web group. These both demonstrate that we have the ability to generate new instances should any instances go down and they boot back up so that the public have access to these instances and enable resilience in the system. And also it helps to auto scale up the system and basically scale up and down. We also need to create auto scalers. So go down to the auto scaling groups. And you'll see that we have the app auto scaler and the web auto scaler. And we want these auto scalers to have a minimum of two instances and a max of six. So we don't want them going above six, but if we load the system enough, we will generate up to six. But that's what we want. You can also see that we've created our launch configurations. We've got our app LC launch configuration and our web config launch configuration. Now, the next step is we want to test that this system works. So if we go to the easy tools and we go to instances running, you see that we have one, two, basically three web servers running. We also have three app auto scales running. Now we can stop these ones. We don't want to terminate them, we just want to stop them. <clears throat> and basically what we're testing here is to see can we still access the system through the elastic load, through the, um, through the load balancers basically. The, and you want to test specifically the web ELB load balancer. So once these have stopped, we should be able to still access the web ELB load balancer. So we're going into the web ELB load balancer. We're going to use the DNS here. And put this into a new tab.
So as you can see, we've stopped the Comp Web Server and the App Comp Server. We've done this so we could test the resilience of our system. You can also see that there are other instances that have been terminated and other ones that have been uh, built up to replace these, which you can see is running. These are the ones running, these are the ones terminated, these are the ones that are stopped. These are not terminated, they're just stopped. So we want to demonstrate that we can access the web ELB, which is our load balancer. This is the one we want to test, this one here. So I've copied that into here. As you can see, we are able to access it and I'll demonstrate by refreshing it and you'll see that the availability zone updates. Let's go to 1C. Let's go back to 1B. Let's go back to 1C. I've also done this in a different browser just to demonstrate that it's working in a different browser. It's the same web ELB. See, it's one C. One B there. It's one C there. Can you refresh it? It's one B. So as you can see, we have created a system which has resilience and which is able to scale up and scale down to meet the needs. If you look at the monitoring on the, the web ELB, you'll see the traffic coming in there and the requests. Then if you go to the instances, you'll see that these are stopped. You'll see there's terminated ones there that have been replaced with running ones. So this gives you a full demonstration of how the resilience is working. I'll also show you the architecture of the system in a draw.io diagram, which is here, which demonstrates how we've designed this system. So we have, as we mentioned earlier in the video, with zone A, zone B, and zone C, with public one in zone a public two and zone b public three and zone c these are what you're seeing when you go through the refreshing of the browser and you go to the different zones you go to the different availability zones you can see we have web subnet one app subnet one and db subnet one all in a and again two uh, web two app two db that needs to be renamed in my video, uh, in my um, diagram. My apologies, this is supposed to be DB2, but the design would be Web Private Submit 2, App Private Submit 2, and DB Private Submit 2. So as you can see, we have the, the Web ELB here, and we have the App ELB here. We have the App Auto Scaling and the Web Auto Scaling. You can see the IP addresses of all the instances and you can see here we have addresses of our dbs so this is the conclusion of the video demonstrating that we have been able to set up a multi-az architecture system with three-tier architecture design and we've been able to demonstrate resilience to instances being terminated and stopped and also scaling when we needed the instances to boot up and scale down. This is the end of the video now.